peace cap. Good morning, I'm back at it. Uh, the first thing I do is cut my pieces. These are 24 inches long. They're eight pieces of three quarter. And mark the centers. Centers are important on this basket. And one needs to be cut to the center to change your weave. We're gonna set that aside. I also, the first thing I do before I start a round basket is grab my weaver. This happens to be 3 eighths and put a nice long taper on it. it. Doesn't have to be quite that long, but there's our taper. And put it in my lap because once I lay these out, there are not enough hands to do the cutting. So the simple method I learned when I first started were to lay my pieces out in such a way that the basket, I would catch them as I was weaving around the basket. So the first step is X. We're gonna make an X. Bad side goes up. Huh? There's no bad side to that one. Rough up. Um, if you have a piece of material, I don't know if you can see the little hairy pieces, that goes up. Now, the first thing we do is an X. We have our X. T, this is where our split one goes, our third piece. The one I just tried for right side, wrong side, is the other side of the T. And mostly, you don't see me looking for the rough side because my fingers are pretty well educated. If not, I fold them, feel it. Usually one side's a little smoother. So we have our X, T, and then we fill in between. Making sure our centers stay on. That's really important. They're hard to adjust. You really can't adjust them later with a round basket. That one's rough up. And here we go. Yep, I'm satisfied with that. Now I explained that we lay these out in such a way that when we start, we're lifting up the first pieces we lay down. So I'm gonna lift up what was number two, poke it, st stash this little end behind number three. And if you handle this carefully, it'll turn out to be a nice round circle. So I use my left hand to hold everything in place. The right hand carries the reed like my Grammy carried her yarn and pulls it into this little V that's created. Okay, so I go around and as soon as I get a little further, I just turn that basket with my left hand because I wanna be working off this side of my body if I'm right-handed. If left-handed, I'd work off this side. But it's more comfortable and easier to turn the basket than it is to turn your body. So I have this and I'm gonna pull, as long as my pieces are spaced equally, this should be fairly round. Now anything can happen. Here we go. Here we go. It's kind of easy to remember XT and in between. Been working that for 40 years and see we have round and you can carefully move your hand the beginning you could have put a clothespin here probably would have been smart but I wasn't thinking and this reed is the most flexible piece I could find and that's really important especially when you start any basket it's good reed it's really important for round baskets because that first row holds it all together with a square basket, it's the first two or three rows. So now that we've got that, we can make some adjustments, make sure it's perfectly round. These two change the weave. If we hadn't had the split, we would be going over and under the same one every time. That's not helpful. So we need an odd number. It changes, like I said, it changes the weave. Now, unlike most round baskets, we're going to start going up immediately but not straight up. We're going to go out at a 45 degree angle to make a conical shape for a B step. 
these steps were made traditionally to live in the middle of the garden and they would house bees and pollinate gardens. They were made grass, willow, whatever was available. Rye grass, I understand, is quite popular. So I'm, I'm standing this piece up, but not straight up, just at an angle here. And the next, a little more, keeping tension with my right hand, keeping my left hand is holding everything in place. The right hand is keeping tension on this weaver. Because there's a, it's a lot about controlling the materials. So now, the second time around, we're back to our split. We're bringing up the other set of reeds. The first time we got half of them, this time we're getting the other half. And because we want this cone shape, we're not trying to make it lay flat or go straight. So do that. Keep going. Keep your rows always, no matter what you're weaving, keep your rows close to each other and it gives you an idea what your basket's gonna look like. So tension, weave, tension on this basket. Not straight up, but out a little bit. Let it just go and make a B step this way. Now I'm weaving with the three eighths, a very nice soft three eighths. Choosing the material is the most important part of the basket weaving in my book. You can use any material for a basket, but choosing the best materials for certain places makes weaving a basket enjoyable. And pay, pay attention to your materials. So we are here and it's getting a little tough to weave on the table and I'm a lap weaver. I'm going to do this on the table. It's a little harder to do it this way because my lap gives me half of my uh, resistance or it holds my basket in place, but harder for you to see. See, I'm going, I'm going out all the time as opposed to something that goes straight up. And if you have to, if you're waiting on a table, maybe a towel or something that'll give it a little resistance and hold it in place would be good. But keep weaving. And what I'm doing with my fingers, I'm pushing on the bottom a little bit and I'm using this finger to hold this out so I don't pull too tight. If you're a regular basket weaver, you're used to pulling, keeping your basket upright. Well, I want to go out just a bit. I want this thing to grow ever so gradually. Oh, let me get us another piece. First, I'm going to trim this here. Show you why. Now, trimming that there and now adding my piece, I'm going to put the bad side in. Rough, rough side goes in. I'm going to cover this up and I can go back one or I can go up, go back to this one or back here, but the idea is to tuck this so you can't see it on the outside and you can't see it on the inside when it's finished. So, and I keep my finger keeping this out just a bit and around and around we go. And I'll get back to you when I get to the door. Okay, well I've woven the whole thing up. I don't know if you can see the angle here. It's very conical shaped. Now, before I put their door in, or a hole, I wanna show you how I tighten everything up. I just grab here and pull, and if there's any loose places or I didn't get it woven tightly, this should take care of that. Do this on all my baskets. I call it, it's called packing. You can do it this way with a tool and pull them all down. I find that snugging up on my spokes so much easier on my fingers. And I'm back where I started. So, across from the split in the back, I'm going to put their door. And their door is simply a hole. I'm going to stop weaving, tuck this back here, and grab another piece a little longer and start weaving over here. Try 
trying to make sure I can, you can see what I'm doing fully uh, in my picture and keep breathing right around a couple more rows on the door sort of close to the bottom right over it and see that makes a nice little opening not much can get in there besides the bee one more piece and we're gonna finish up right we don't have a lot of room here to tuck and bend but we don't want to stop and leave this blunt place and we tapered to begin with so we're going to taper to end start here taper back gradually makes a nice flat bottom or flatter weave this to the end and then bend over the spokes that we can now this one there's one we can bend over and this one go around here a couple of them are a bit short that one's not so great we have to take some emergency action on those but we can fix about anything so there we go and i'm going to cut off the odd ones just so you can see how i do this here's a good one it's a long one bend it over then i put a roll a little roll in it and i'm pushing from the outside with my thumb which causes an opening here see that i'm hoping you can see that and then i simply slide it down in so the other choice is to take a tool make an opening here and poke it down in there. so i go all the way around i tend not to use tools because when i first started weaving my son would steal my tools and it was easier just to my fingers are attached so that's not a thing i put a pin on that one because it was very short the rim will hold it this one's so short I'm gonna cut it off it's not gonna be any um, this one as well there's not gonna be any stress on this rim so I cut these two little ones off as well and the odd ones that would not bend over so there we have a nice cone shaped biscuit let's I'll be back to do the rim and the ring at the top. Okay, I'm back. I'm using a 5 8 flat for the inside rim. And 5 8 flat all for the outside. It's not going to get any wear and tear. It's not going to pick up a load. So I'm going to pin this. This was 3 8 This is 5 8 So I'm pinning this just over the 3 8 on side. Just here we are over that three eighths. Covering this up. I consider this split the back of anything because it's where I start and stop if I've added color or anything different happens. It's not as symmetrical. So I consider the opposite the split the front. So we have our front to overlap that and let it you try to butt these up they don't transition well they'll end up looking egg-shaped and I know this is the bottom and it's going to sit on the ground but I have a habit of using a piece of round reed in my ribs so I'm going to do it that's the way I'm set up to do it so to do a rim I take down a slight bit of this so when they overlap there's no high point there take that down gently go to the opposite side I don't want anything I don't want two or three things going on in the same place like overlaps it's really hard to rip so what I do is I put my round reed as out of habit on this edge I wouldn't need to this is laying on the ground but it looks pretty anyway so, and if someone were going to hang this upside down and use it for a light fixture, um, they'd appreciate it with no hole. So here we go. Just pin this in place, only covering that top row. See that top row covers up nicely and I have this to put my laser through. It works beautifully. Here we go. 
we are. Keep going round and round. See, if I were trying to do this all at the same place, and I see a lot of people do that when I pick up used baskets or baskets at Goodwill to paint and sell, I find that a lot of people try to put their rims overlap in the same spot. And that's hard to hold together for anybody who's trying to, oops, that is trying to lace them. So I've come to my place and I've gone beyond, I always do. So, but I'm gonna taper this, taper this, right there, nice taper, gradual taper. And these pieces have to butt together because you can see there's no room in there for any overlapping to happen. Let's cut this right off, fit that down in there. See, doesn't that look much nicer than if I, oops, if I left that. Well, we'll just put that back in there and lace right over it. No one will be the wiser to tell anybody. Okay, there we are. Now I have a piece of quarter flat soaked. I want a really good piece of material because I'm gonna drag this six times through, or once through every one of these holes. So a good piece is important. Go inside near your outside overlap. So when you come back around, if you have a little slack, you can slide it right under. And now take off a pin, go inside, slide it right where, like you did, like you ended your pieces. Snip the end of that a little better. Wrap it around, not quite two times, is plenty. And this thing is about 15 feet long and I don't wanna drag 15 feet, so I wanna know where I can cut it. Now I think the hairy side has got up and I don't want that to happen. It's dreadful. So I turned it over. Go in a hole. Okay, remember we tapered? First lesson, we tapered. Where we tapered leaves me dry. I don't wanna start down here. That just doesn't look, look good. So I am going to make an opening right there and I'll make another one at the end because I can see it's doing the same thing. But for now, we're starting here. I made an opening so I can put it right under my rim and flip this around. And lace. This is called lashing or lacing. Depends on where you are in the country, I guess. I learned it is lacing. Other people I hear calling it lashing. Reminds me of a shoe. That's how you lace a sneaker, remember in the days before Velcro? So I'm putting it through this hole, grabbing, and I just park it there because if I have a really long piece, I don't want it twisting on me. I'm going to pull with my right hand off at this angle, push with that thumb, get it tight as possible. This is holding the whole works together, people. So we're gonna do a good job. See that? And finish, it matters. Even to the bees. Bees want a nice hole. This is a lovely piece to put on a little table on a porch, under cover, on a board, in the garden during the summer. I wouldn't leave it out in the winter. The bees wouldn't want to be out there either. Um, they need more shelter than this provides. But it's a lovely little piece. You could hang it. You could do a number of things with it. It's kind of fun with a light, a solar light in it. It's not a bee skip anymore, but it does make an interesting piece. But be careful with your rims. You see me pushing this back down. Well, that thing would lift right up and I'd be lacing this rim to that rim and there'd be nothing in the middle. And that's very discouraging. Happens, happens. See that, it lifts right up. So, what I'm gonna, what I do is just keep pushing it down, checking, making sure there's an opening, making sure there's some, some reed under there. Now we're back. Remember where our taper was a little longer than one piece? It wasn't just one little piece. So again, I don't want to drop down here. I'll show you what that would look like. I don't think it's pretty, like this. And then it would look like this. 
what I want is a nice smooth. I don't want anything that says, this is a funny looking spot. So I make an opening here and here, here, and proceed just as if the basket were woven this way. Now, I know there's read under there because we had a full piece and then we tapered a piece. And it's that tapered piece that's making it a little wider. We need that, but we also want this to look pretty. So let's cut my split thing. I just got a scruffy piece on here. Cut that off. Push everything together nice and tight. There we are. Now, I need to end this thing somehow. So I'm gonna go in here and put this here. I have been known to use a dab of glue, just so this never pulls out. Not necessary. I know the purists are, are uh, having a heyday, saying, oh my goodness, she glues her baskets. but. You know what? Better save this. Sorry. And now I made a terrible mess of my table. I have this lovely basket. I'm going to snip this here. Flip it over. I have a bee house. And the last thing is a little loop at the top. Now I bent the little loop of a piece of half inch flat. I just made a circle. And bent it up earlier so it would be loop shaped. Now I'm going to get my glue out again. Here we go with that glue. Yeah. Glue, 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 glue. And I want this to be a small loop. I don't want the loop to take over the basket. So I'm going to use two pins. Later I'll take the pins off and glue the loop the overlap part underneath. But for now, that's our bee skip. I don't know what you can see here. Boy, I know, I'll move the camera. So there's our bee skip. I hope you enjoyed it. And you make some for friends and family.